Hello, hello, and welcome. I'm a little bit late today. Uh, please forgive me. I had the most hectic day uh, today, and I almost didn't make it on. Uh, but here I am a few minutes after seven. So I hope you all can still jump on with me here today, live on jamaicans.com, live on My Temple Wellness. Great to see you guys all out here. So guys, today we're going to be talking about uh, understanding trauma, uh, a very tough topic. Uh, oh yeah, I do have my other earring in. I, I wasn't sure if I had, was able to get them both in. <laughs> I told you guys I was busy, um, busy running around, taking care of so much. Um, anyway, guys, hi, Vivia. Hello, 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 hello. Um, all right, guys, before I jump into saying hello to you guys, I just want to formally introduce myself. I'm a little late, so I'm going to jump right into our topic. It's not going to be a long one. I really want you guys to participate with me today. This show is really going to be a show that I want you guys to um, join in and talk back to me. All right. So again, this show is based on trauma, understanding trauma, and we're literally just going to touch the surface of it because there's so much to it. Um, so we're not gonna delve too deep in, we're gonna just kind of scratch the surface, okay? So before we go any further, guys, as I said, let me introduce myself. My name is Deborah Johnson. I am a nutritionist. I'm also a wellness, uh, health and wellness coach. Uh, I don't do too much coaching right now because I have so many other projects going on. And so predominantly I focus on nutrition education, all right? So I'm a community nutritionist. I have a master's degree in nutrition uh, and I have a few other certifications in nutrition, a nutritional psychology, um, certified um, trauma support specialist, uh, mental health first aid instructor. So when it comes to this particular topic that we're gonna talk about today, it's a topic that I actually have a little bit of background in, um, not a lot. <laughs> um, and so today I just wanna talk a bit about it because it's Mental Health Awareness Month. And I'm not sure if you guys are aware of that, but May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Last week we had on Kara who was here. Um, love her. She's so sweet. She came on and shared a sad story about her, the loss of her son, Isaac, so precious um, as a result of suicide. He died by suicide. Uh, and so mental health is really important. And I'm going to continue to talk about, you know, mental health until the end of May. And then June, we'll go into a different topic. All right. So for now, um, I want you guys to really care for your mental health by logging on every Mondays and hanging out with me and just hear the different topics, but also participate, all right? You never know what the topic might be and how it might actually help you or heal you, all right? So as we go through, guys, I want you all to share the video with whomever you have on your platform. So just hit the share button and allow it to show up on your page and other people can join in and uh, enjoy as we're here. Uh, I want to know where you guys are watching me from. Okay. So please, as you come on, tell me where you're watching from, where you're watching from so I can shout you out. So I can big up your place, whether it's Brooklyn or Jamaica or Barbados, wherever you guys are watching. I want to know, I am sitting right now in the Bronx, my windows open so you can hear the cars going by <laughs> right now. Um, yeah, I'm in busy, busy New York. Right. Um, anyway, so yeah, guys, as you come on, let me know where you're watching from. I really love to know where all my all my viewers are coming in from. And yeah, so as we're doing that, guys, I want you all to make sure that you are following me. If you're not following me on My Temple Wellness, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, I'm on the social media handles and it's all at My Temple Wellness. And I just jumped on to this new platform called Clubhouse. So if you're on there, look for me and My Wellness. That's a new um, app that a, a good friend of mine, a family member actually told me about, and now I'm using it and it's, it's actually kind of cool. So if you guys are on clubhouse, look me up there. I'll probably start like, a, um, I'll probably create a club on there and you guys can join on or whatever. Uh, in addition to, oh, I didn't go over this part. So my temple wellness, I provide nutrition and wellness services to individuals and also to organizations, as I said before, community nutritionists. Uh, and this is my message. The body's a temple. So all of this that we have, our brain, our, from, from our hair follicles to our toenails, like Jill Scott always says, you know, she has that song 
from her hair follicles to her toenails. I forgot the rest of the lyrics, but that's a part of the song. <laughs> and guys, you have to care for all of it, all right? And so your body's a temple. You want to care for it. This is my website where you guys can go learn more about me. I have a couple of recipes up there. I'm hoping to have some more. I'm hoping to work on a book. Um, I start and stop um, with the recipe book because of so many different projects, all right? So I know you guys are hanging in there with me as I work through all this stuff. Um, so follow me on social media, as I said before, I'm gonna show you my social media handles um, real quick so you guys can see what we've got going on. Um, let me see if I can share um, what I have coming up. So I have some projects coming up right now. Uh, hang on guys, bear with me. So this is my Instagram page and let me put it out bigger. It's my Instagram page guys. So what I want for you guys to do is to go on and follow so you can be abreast of everything that's going on, right? I have this event coming up and this is what I really wanna um, really highlight this evening before we get into the show. I have what's called Thursday Delights. I'm working with Bronx Eats. I partner with this organization and I'm gonna be teaching the folks who log on, it's a free event, uh, how to make the Jamaican sweet potato pudding. So I want you guys to come out, represent, okay? Come on out, join me this Thursday. Uh, you, all you have to do is scan that thing that you see there. So once you follow me, go on, you can see a way to get to the page to be able to, to Bronx Eats um, Instagram and website. You just have to sign up, they'll send you the link and the recipe and you guys will join me on Thursday on Zoom and from my kitchen and I'll be doing this recipe for you guys. I know most of you, if you are on here and you're Jamaican, you probably already know how to make this pudding. Um, it's my mom's recipe um, and I'm gonna be doing a surprise. So if you come on, you'll get to see the surprise that I'm gonna be doing a really, really nice surprise that you do not want to miss. You're gonna get a bonus recipe if you tune in on Thursday, all right? So that's what I have going on. Um, make sure you are following, all right? Uh, and so that's my Instagram. My Facebook is the same. Uh, just go on, hit the like button, hit the follow button, and you get to see um, you get to see all the things that I am doing as well. That's probably the best way for you to keep um, updated on the things that I'm doing is to follow me on social media, all right? So follow me on social media, on Facebook, um, and on Instagram and Twitter, all right, guys? So let me stop sharing and we're gonna jump into the lesson <laughs> today. We're not going to be on for too long. I'm gonna say hello to you guys before I start to talk about the topic for today, all right? Which is understanding charama. All right, let's get into our into our hellos here. So Ms. Vivia, good evening, Ms. Vivia. Uh, Yvonne Smith is here. Am I doing this right? Yep, there we go. Good evening, Yvonne. Lovely to have you here. Uh, enjoy, she says. Um, she's in Kowit, what is that? Kowita, Georgia? <laughs> Kowita, Georgia. Hope I'm saying that right. And then Shelly is in New Jersey. We've got Dawn from London. Uh, and Clarion is here from Jamaica. Hang on a second, guys. I just have to um, see if Hubs can come and close this window for me. You guys are live with me, so you know, anything goes. <laughs> Just give me a second while I ask him to come and close this window. Um, so yeah. Hey babe, can you come and close this window for me? I'm on live and the window, the, the noise is crazy. <laughs> Thanks, all right, bye. Okay, I know, crazy. I didn't wanna yell on top of my lungs. <laughs> um, Clarion is in Kingston. What is that? Jarvan says, hello. Oh, so much better. Thank you, hon. Um, Lisa is here on YouTube from London, from England, across the pond there. Uh, I am a clinical mental health therapist. Ooh, Vivia. That's nice. That's good to know. Maybe you can come on live with me and we can talk and share some information, some additional information to folks. If you'd like to, please let me know. That'd be great. Um, always looking for folks to come on, guys, if you're not aware. Um, if you have something that you want to share 
and you want to come on live with me and share anything related, wellness related, nutrition related, I'm happy to have um, folks come on and share. Um, good evening, Michelle, with me. So Vivia, if you're interested, just hit me up and I'd love to have you on. Uh, Zuma, say wagwan, wagwan. <laughs> not not gone, just just live. New York City in the building. That's Carrick. You guys know who that is. Hello, Miss Bridget from. Well, you didn't say where you're where you're watching from, but hey, Bridget. <laughs> um, that would be awesome. I'll PM you. Yes, please do. That'd be great. All right, guys. So short session this evening. Please stay on. I want you guys to talk back to me. It's a talking um, piece that we're going to be doing. Hi, Teresa. Good evening. We're going to be chatting with each other. I want you guys to share. And I love that Vivia is here. Um, Vivia, please stay on because I'd love for you to um, share out as well if you have some input on the stuff that I'm going to be talking about this evening. All right. So let me go ahead and share my screen. I have a PowerPoint very short PowerPoint today. We're going to just basically define trauma and get into a little bit about, um, you know, how you can identify. Okay, here we go. How you can understand just a little bit more about trauma, guys, because trauma is something that really, uh, really plagues us. And we don't really know that we have, or we're experiencing trauma or have experienced trauma. And so it's really important for us to, let me hide this comment here. Hang on a second. It's really important for, okay, good. Stay with me. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, let's take that comment off. Guys, bear with me this evening. Again, I have been around the world today and <laughs> back. Um, banners. So let's hide that. All right, good. There we go. So guys, let's jump right in. So understanding trauma as you could see around the word alone, you can see so many different things, alcohol, depression, health, tragedy, um, loss, right? Let me make that just a little bit bigger for you guys. Um, you can see all these different words surrounding that one word, trauma. Um, but before we go any further, I like to do my disclaimer. So all the information that I'll be giving today is really for uh, informational purposes only, guys. All right. So if it's not intended to treat you or diagnose you or even give you a specific medical advice, if you have specific questions about any medical matter, you should consult your doctor, a clinician, um, and really speak to them about any questions that you might have. All right. So let's get right in here. Let's continue. So May is Mental Health Awareness Month. I've made that clear. I've been shouting that from the rooftop. And one in four people will suffer from a form of mental illness or uh, in, in, in any given year. And actually, uh, the numbers have gone up as a result of the pandemic, as a result of uh, COVID. And so we really want to break the silence and break the stigma. And so that's why, as much as this is an, a topic that not a lot of people want to talk about, I'm out here to talk about it because we have to address it. There's no way around mental health, not addressing mental health. We have to break the stigma, especially in our community, Caribbean community, black community. We tend to run away from talking about mental health. Um, and, and it's because, you know, the way we were raised, I remember, and you guys, again, share, comment, share your stories as you're going on. Don't forget to share this video. Um, if you guys, I was at an event, it was like a, a talk. Somebody was giving a talk and it was actually like a marriage, um, it was like at a marriage conference or something like that. And I remember it was a small group of people. And I remember this one person was struggling in her marriage. And she actually said, like, I would not seek therapy because of how I was raised, because I was what I was told, right? So sometimes people are even dealing with issues in marriages, in relationships, and they won't speak to anyone. They won't get help. They won't speak up because of the stigma around mental health. And so I really want us to break that down. I want us to break down the walls of, um, you know, not speaking about uncomfortable topics because how are we going to get, you know, how are we going to get through? We have to walk through, right? Some things you have to walk out. You can't get around, you can't go around the mountain, right? <laughs> you have to climb the mountain to get to the top. So we have to really take our time, get, you know, get the knowledge, learn, and really try to break all the stigma, especially for folks who have children. You want them to be comfortable talking about mental health. Okay. You don't want to run away from it. Caribbean people, Jamaican people don't run away from mental health conversations. They're very important to have. All right. So many people struggle with it. Um, and it, it seems like it's not a lot of, um, 
like it has to be schizophrenia or bipolar. No, it anxiety is a mental health issue, right? Depression is a mental health issue, right? So it's not just, you know, the typical large, you know, or the, the more complicated ones like schizophrenia and all of that. Um, depression and anxiety are, you know, panic attacks also are uh, mental health um, issues. All right. So let's define trauma, right? Because that's what we're talking about today. Trauma is created when the body experiences more change in the outer and inner environments than it can manage. When the body um, is pushed to that point, we have to adapt and we or we have to mitigate, right? And so when you say adapt and mitigate, adapting means that you are actually finding a way to deal with the situation. You're staying in the situation. And mitigate is almost like you're fleeing from the situation. You're trying to find a way out. You're trying to leave the situation. And a lot of times people think that it's bad to try to remove yourself from the situation, but actually the body is just trying to do that to heal itself. It's trying to do that to stop whatever is happening to it. Now, if we end up adapting and um, start, uh, start to uh, sort of get comfortable with the trauma, now that can actually cause issues in our body. And so I'm going to talk about a little bit about the different uh, ways that it can affect our body in just a second. Uh, as I said before, this is a short, um, short class tonight, short, short session. I really want us to talk. I want you guys to give me some feedback. And so I really want to get through this and then we can start talking about some of our traumas, <laughs> some of the things that we experience. I'll share some stories. Right. Um, but yeah, guys, it's really when the body is experiencing something and it could be inside. So an inner um, inner or it could be something outside that you just cannot manage. All right. And so we have to find a way whether we adapt to it or we mitigate, which is move away from the situation. Right. And so sometimes people feel like we shouldn't set boundaries in our lives, because when you set those boundaries, sometimes you are actually stopping some relationships in your life from existing, right? You're, you're ending friendships, you're moving away from a situation and sometimes it's necessary, right? Uh, in order to stop that trauma. All right. Now changes in the environment bring on changes in the hormones. And that's really the topic for tonight, guys, is really just, I'm going to just highlight some of the things that happens within our body. So whenever we have a change in our environment that, um, or any type of trauma, right? The hormones and our biochemistry of our bodies are affected. And when that happens, it leads to particular and even predictable changes in our behavior in our emotions and in the way we think. So I want us to start to understand that when we talk about trauma, that trauma can actually adjust your hormones and your biochemistry, right? I took biochemistry when I was completing my master's degree and it's a whole lot of <laughs> complicated stuff, right? That the body does, right? And so just knowing that alone, that you're changing your biochem, you're changing, you know, your behavior changes, your emotions, and even the way you think changes, this can happen because of different traumas. And I'll share with you guys um, an, a situation that happened in my life um, that I still recognize as, oh my gosh, that happened. And every time I I'll get into it in a second, something really seemingly not a big deal, but you know, it, it becomes a big deal later on in life, right? So this is what happens. Hypothalamus is a part of the brain. I'm not going to get too technical. So I know there's some technical terminology or scientific terminology, but it's, I'm just going to keep it simple. So some of, these are some of the things that happen. The hypothalamus activates the adrenal glands to re release um, adrenaline and cortisol. And I wanted to point out just two of the stress hormones that are released Cortisol is stored, and you guys might remember when I talked before about stress, cortisol is a stress hormone, and that stress hormone gets stored in our belly, right? And so this all ties back to your health and nutrition and everything like that. So your stress, if you have stress because of this activation of your hypothalamus, which is in the brain, right, you're going to actually have, you know, belly fat come on you as a result of the cortisol. And of and quite a few other things happen to the body as well when you have um, these adrenal, uh, uh, adrenaline and um, cortisol being released. Those are two of those stress hormones, right? So that's what happens whenever your body is responding to a type of threat 
toxic stress and toxic stress is just stress over a period of time. So if you're dealing with something over and over, the same incident over and over and over, that's really to toxic stress or what we also call adversity. So it's it, your body is trying to react. These are, again, guys, this is a natural phenomenon that occurs in the body. Okay. But you can't stop these things from happening. These, this is what's part of the autonomic nervous system, right? Which means it happens automatically. Like think about your heart. When you go to sleep at night, if your heart was not connected to the autonomic system, right? What would happen is you would have to make your heart beat. <laughs> but because it's a part of the autonomic system, it beats whether you're sleeping or not, right? So think about it in this same way. When you get stressed out, these things happen, right? So I want you to think about that. This is a part of the autonomic system, okay? Which means these things happen automatically. You can't turn this off, okay? You can by reducing your stress, but once you have stress, once you feel threats and you have toxic stress or adversity, these things happen, okay? So the cortisol, that's one. Um, you overly, overly active stress hormones will weaken the immune system, reducing the body's response to foreign pathogens. So guys, obviously we are in the pandemic. We all know about COVID, right? So if you have a lot of stress, you are going to reduce um, and weaken your immune system, right? And so you're not going to be able to react to any type of issues that might attack your body, any type of um, foreign pathogen, as it says here, which is basically, you know, anything that's attacking your system, right? Your, your um, lymphatic system is there to really help you to get the white blood cells out and fight and really take care of you. But if you're highly stressed, your system, your immune system is weakened. Okay. That's number two. Number three is stress hormones affect your respiratory and cardiovascular system. All right. So your breathing will change. You'll notice your breath. If you get stressed out, you're taking different, your breath is different. Okay. The next time you get really stressed, just like me, I have a, a, a smartwatch, right? And I can tell if I'm really stressed, my heart rate goes up, right? So you can tell if your heart rate goes up, you can tell if you're, and it even has like a stress, <laughs> like a stress section on here. I, don't, I haven't really figured out how to use it that well, but within the app, I can check to see my stress level, right? And so your heart rate changes, your, your, your stress level goes up, your cardiovascular system and your respiratory system is affected. A couple other things that occur when the body is responding to threat. And again, normal uh, things that we're going to, um, that's happening, right? The liver is going to produce extra glucose to give you a boost of energy, right? And the bowel production falls off. So basically what's happening is you're not able to really digest your food properly because um, you need your liver to properly function, right? And if you're releasing glucose, you're also affecting your, um, your um, uh, it's slipping me right now, but you know, glucose affects your um, insulin, <laughs> right? So guys, when it comes to this normal function of the body, when you're dealing with stress, these are some of the major things that are going on, right? So you don't want to affect your insulin. You don't want your insulin response to, you know, change because of this effect on your liver, right? You want to keep a normal balance system. You want to be what we call regulated, all right? And so hopefully next week, I'll jump a little bit more into what you can do. Today, we're just going to have some talks and chat a little bit more. Um, and the final thing that occurs is muscles, your muscles tighten in the body, uh, and that can cause headaches, tension headaches, back pain, shoulder pain, and just overall body ache. If you ever notice that you feel really, if you get really, really stressed out, you sometimes start to start to feel like a headache is coming on. Right. And it's really because your muscles are getting ready for you to run or getting ready for you to do something. That's one of the reasons why your muscles are um, tightening. All right. And so these are some of the natural things that occur um, within the body. Now we're going to have a chat. I want you to be reminded. I just wanted to touch on it today. I didn't want to go too deep because it's so it's, it's so much. Um, your mind matters. Your mind, your brain, your mental health matters. OK. Um, and that's really it for the presentation for today. One of the things that I want you guys to think about and really focus on what I said is this main statement here, that anytime you have a change in your environment, right? This is the main key for today. Whenever you have a change in your environment, right? Your, um, there's going to be a change in your hormones. Your biochemistry of your body is going to adjust, 
right? And this leads to predictable, so they can predict the changes within your behavior, your emotions, and your thinking, all right? So this is the key thing I want to leave with you guys today is recognize that, okay? I'm going to blow it up on the screen. So if you guys do want to take a photo of it, there it is. Again, changes in the environment brings on changes in the hormones and biochemistry of the body. This leads to particular and partic predictable changes in behavior, emotions, and in your thinking. All right. So let's not um, underestimate what the autonomic nervous system is doing, what our body is doing naturally. This is what our body is doing naturally. Okay. So we have to be mindful of that. Now I'm going to jump into the comments. And as I'm there, I'm going to be sharing a little bit about um, a situation that occurred to, with me uh, when I was younger. And I realized recently um, what, you know, the effects of it on me today. So when I was a little girl, I was born and raised in a Jamaica, and you guys know. So I lived in um, on with family, right? So there was it was called Thompson Town. My name before Johnson was Thompson. Close, right? <laughs> um, yeah, and so we lived near all my cousins and my aunts and my uncles, and like most people, right? You get in a in a community and you all live, you know, as one. Now, so I was close to all my aunties and all my uncles and everything like that. We go to each other's houses and we give milk because we I had a farm. So we my my dad had cows and we would milk the cows and share milk. This is the kind of life that we were living with each other. So we were really, really close. And my aunt that lived almost almost directly across from me, she passed away. And you know, obviously, as a kid, when you're young, that's a traumatizing thing in and of itself. For some reason. I just could not attend the funeral. So they left me in the house by myself. <laughs> and that was mistake number one, because I was crying, mirabal, mirabal blood. I didn't want to go because I was scared of just the whole thing. Um, and people had died before, but for some reason, I don't know if it was just that one aunt that I was close to or that I really loved or whatever. I love all my aunts and uncles. Um, but for some reason, that one hit home. And so they everybody left. They went to the funeral, left me in the house. And while I was there, a song came on the radio. I was telling one of my 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 one of my besties about this the other day. And the song, as I'm talking about it, is coming in my head. I'm sure my heart rate just went up. The song that I heard was like a song that every few years I'll hear the song. And every time I hear the song, I'm triggered. I literally have a moment, like an outer body experience, like I'm back in Jamaica, in the house, by myself, scared, you know? Um, and so it's a reoccurring thing. I can't stop the song from playing because I could be somewhere and I just hear the song come on. You know what I mean? So I can't actually get away from it. If it's happened to be in my house or something like that, now I don't listen to the radio. So it's a song that I would have to really request and play. I don't know the name of it. I just know how it sounds. And it's, it's singing in my head right now. <laughs> So, yeah, so sometimes an incident can happen to you. And that's why I wanted to kind of just bring out that little story for you to now think about. It could be something as simple as what I just said, right? Another incident occurred, not with me, but in a, in a book I'm reading right now. I'll, I'll um, recommend the title maybe next week um, when I finish it. But um, so it, within this book, there was a story being told about a young girl who had type type one diabetes who basically had a reaction and she was, you know, her, her numbers were all over the place and they were trying to figure out what's wrong with her. They took her to the hospital. They couldn't figure out what happened. Nobody knew what was going on. They thought that she was actually messing with her numbers, what occurred to her. And again, the question that they asked her is what happened to you? Eventually when they got a psychologist there, they asked what happened to you. Right. And she was able to share a story of when she was younger she saw a friend of hers got shot and the ambulance came. So while she was in the hospital, the ambulance kept triggering her. And so it caused a lot of up and down spike um, within her, with her blood sugar. And so again, guys, that's just one story, right? There's so many stories, stories like mine, where you might've had something happen. Now there's a long list of things. Like if I were to show you a photo of a woman being held you know, by a man, right? being held against her will by men. That might trigger something in you if you've been through a situation where you got abused, right? Um, and so 
So, you know, there's so many different instances. If you've ever been in a fire, if you see fire, if you smell smoke, you might end up feeling traumatized as a result of the smoke. A lot of people are talking about being traumatized right now as a result of the pandemic, right? Um, and so we have to address our traumas. We have to address these things because otherwise, like I said before, all these different things will happen in our body. Okay. Now, some of the some of the things I mentioned are, you know, obviously some really traumatic situations that might have happened in a person's life. Um, could be a loss. It could be it could be a numerous amount of things. I told you of the most simplest example of hearing music and that same music just trigger me, right? So I want you to start to think about that. Start asking yourself what are some of the things that you might be carrying that you might be um, triggered and. Think about how, and I'll give you some tools hopefully next week. Maybe we can have um, Vivi, I think is her name, come on, we can share. I also have a couple, um, a doctor that I'm hoping to get on his schedule um, to get him here. Yeah, Vivia, um, to share maybe some tips as well on what you guys can do. Um, but trauma is something that we cannot neglect, right? Um, there's stress, toxic stress, adversity. Uh, and trauma and, you know, PTSD is one of the things that people refer to, but I'm not going to use those terminologies because again, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a doctor. So I want to kind of just keep it sort of a um, little bit surface <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, so guys, let's jump into some of your comments. Um, that's Vivia saying she was going to stay. Uh, and, and now I want to just chat with you guys. So share with me any incident that might've gone on with you, if you like, right? Cause we're out here public. <laughs> We're out here um, in social media world. So, you know, if you're comfortable, please feel free to share something that might trigger you that might have happened to you in your past. And I'm sure if I think there's probably a bunch of other things that has happened as well. Right. Um, hey, Sophia, that's my good friend over there, Miss Sophia Murphy. Um, Kerry in our communities is totally ignored. Yeah, I know she's probably talking about mental health. Yes, exactly, Miss Harvey. Totally agree. Um, Bridget, still here from YouTube. Uh, I had a conversation with my BFS uh, last Friday about this same thing. Wow. I am Jamaican and my family doesn't talk about any of this stuff. I'm seeing the therapist because I need that outlet. Girl, giving you some kudos right now. <laughs> Snap, snap, snap. Good for you. That's so, I commend you, Bridget. Keep up doing that, right? We need to have these conversations. And this is a clear example of why I do these shows. Now, they don't get as much likes and <laughs> and as much watch viewship as when I'm in the kitchen cooking or I'm talking about some other topic. But anytime I touch on mental health, everybody, scatter. <laughs> no, come back. Sit down and listen. <laughs> it's important. You never know, right? But Bridget, thank you for sharing that. It's so true. Jamaican people, Korean people, we don't want to talk about it, but yet it still affects us. We still deal with mental health. It still affects us, guys. So we need to talk about it. Camille, hey, welcome. Welcome. Good afternoon. Another regular. Um, Carrie Ann, my cousin walked out the door, was missing for months, and people think he's just mad. But his roommate was killed and someone chopped his arm. Wow, no one wants to talk about it. The man experienced true trauma. Now that sounds like some real trauma right there. Imagine that, right? Imagine that, that how do you process that? And that's the thing, we need an outlet. We need a way to process. Doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have therapy. One of the things that I do is I write in a journal. I write whatever I'm feeling. And a lot of times they are really just prayers to God for help. And prayers to God just because he's my source. Now, I don't know what you guys believe. I know most Jamaican people, Caribbean people believe in God and we pray and most of us are Christians and things like that. So that's my outlet, you know, talking to a family, right? The more you talk about it, the more it's sort of, it's like therapy each time you talk about it to someone, talk about it to someone you trust. And that's one of the things I think in our community, that's really um, a part of the problem. We don't trust a lot of people. <laughs> Jamaican people sometimes never trust their family, right? You never trust to talk to your family about certain things. But we need to find people that we trust, whoever it is. You know, I have a couple of really close friends. I used to have a lot of people that I know, and now my circle kind of dwindles down. And, you know, for whatever reason, that's what happened. And it's okay. I Those few people that I have in my life, I trust them. And they trust me, and we share you know, so it's it's hard to build relationships, especially when you get older, to build relationships with people that you can talk to. Because once you get past a certain age, 
you don't really want no more new friend. <laughs> am, am I lying? <laughs> right? So it's kind of hard to establish new relationships and new friendships. And so, but what I would say to that guys is tread lightly, go slow, move slow. You know, um, I'm one of those people, I pull you in early. And if I discover anything, then I'll, you know, I <laughs> just gave you guys a little secret about me. But yeah, I tend to trust everybody up front, right? And until you kind of give me a reason not to. And then it's not that I release you. It's more like boundaries. And I may have to set some boundaries because sometimes we think that we're discarding a friendship. We're not discarding a friendship. We're just establishing boundaries. And that's a language I want you guys to start using. Boundaries, setting boundaries. It's okay to set boundaries. It's okay to put some perimeters around your life um, if you find that certain people or certain situations is affecting you. You can do that. You're allowed to do that, all right? So I wanna empower you guys to do that. Do not allow trauma to keep coming at you. You need to mitigate. That's the word that we used before, right? Mitigate. It's not all the time you can adapt because sometimes you're, it calls for you to adapt. But if it's a short-term thing and it's really like one, one off or two off, maybe you will adapt to it. But if it's something that's consistent and going on and on and on, you might want to mitigate, which means not necessarily run from it, but find a solution, okay? Um, Vivia, okay, so she was agreeing with me, which is good. So I must have said something good when she agreed because she is a clinician, guys, um, who may be coming on here to talk with us. Um, Carrie Ann, how do we treat trauma without medicating? You know, in our communities, we don't like to take them pills. Listen, okay. Now you guys know me as a nutritionist, right? I'm I'm also a wellness coach. I'm into wellness, mental health. Um, and so I will, I'm not a medical doctor, as I said in the beginning. <laughs> Medication, and, and maybe I'll do a class, a nutritional psychology class, because there's been a lot of studies that prove that and I'm not telling you not to take your medication if you need to take your medication. However, food can help. Fitness can help. There are other ways, right? So if, for, for example, someone who don't want to take any pills, there's other ways. You have to find the right person that's willing to treat you, right? And nutritional psychology is a new emerging field. And that's why I went out and got a certificate in that, in, in that to add to my nutrition already my master's in nutrition, I wanted to add um, nutritional psychology to it because, you know, I understand that the mind is really plaguing us in a way that we end up eating, overeating, and it causes other issues in our lives like obesity, right? But the idea here, just to answer what you're saying, Carrie Ann, is not everything need a medication. You have to, I would say for me personally, exhaust all options first. Um, for example, Mental health can be you're not sleeping, right? Or you might be dealing with issues where you're not able to sleep at night. And I had that, you guys know I'm very transparent. I had that incident when I was I was uh, working at this job and I had a lot of stress and it was just getting wearing on me, right? I've since left and changed careers and everything when I was doing accounting. If you guys didn't know, I used to be an accountant. And um, I went to the doctor and he prescribed for me sleeping pills. Now, I personally did my research on it and I discovered that this thing can cause a whole host of other issues in my body. And something I learned when I was studying um, from my anatomy and physiology teacher, <laughs> she basically said, well, whatever happens, whatever you take in your body, just like when you ingest food, right? When I drink my water or eat my smoothie, you guys know I always have my rusty smoothie. <laughs> when I have my smoothie, whatever is in this smoothie is going to affect my body. Now, if this was a cup of alcohol, it's going to affect my body. Just like if you take medication, it's going to affect your body. It's going to do the thing it needs to do, but it's going to do some other things too, right? So that's the thing you have to recognize about medication, any medication, whether it's for your mental health or it's for your, you know, your foot or your headache or anything. That's why I don't take headache pills. I don't take headache pills. If I have a headache, I drink water and I go to my bed early that night. I don't take headache, headache pills. If it's really extreme, then I'll do it. Like if my eyes are hurting and even then I still go lay down and sleep and sometimes I feel better. So I'm not a, I would never sit here and really promote medication to you guys. Um, if someone has a mental health issue, legit, um, whether it's um, schizophrenia, bipolar, some of these things, you might need to go that route. Um, but for me, 
I try to also tell people about the, psych, the the nutritional aspect. And again, there is an emerging field called nutritional psychology where they are discovering that you can actually use food, like I've been saying, use food to really heal the mind as well. Okay, not just the physical body from here down, but here up as well. All right, guys. So we need to um, look into that, right? Our community needs to look into that. Our shoulders, yes, my shoulders hurt so bad when I get anxious. Yeah, because of the tension that I discussed that I mentioned earlier, right? All right, let me get through these comments. I have a lot more comments to go. I don't want to stay too long on one topic. Brain, uh, Brian, one of our most precious, oh, brain, one of our most precious organs. <laughs> yes, it is, right? Um, and we don't think about it because it's up here. So Vivia, who's a um, clinician, thank you, it is the best it is best to speak to a psychiatrist and let them know your concerns. Not everyone likes medication and there are um, other methods. Thank you. So we hear it from a clinician, guys. Vivia is a clinician and she's saying just that, right? Speak to a psychiatrist and also um, express your concerns to them uh, as well. And that's going to make a difference, right? Veterans are constantly plagued with trauma or PTSD. Yes. So folks who have gone to uh, the war, have fought for their country, tend to have a lot of PTSD, right? And that's post-traumatic stress disorder, which means you're basically something occurred to you before. Another story that's in the book that I'm reading, and I got to find the book. I have so many books. <laughs> I have a pile of books right here and a bunch of papers. Um, and I don't, know where it is, but I'll, I'll find it and recommend it to you guys. But basically in this book, there's another story about a gentleman who went to the war, came back and um, was living with his wife and everything is fine. And anytime he would hear like a truck backfire or something like that, he would literally like dive and just like duck for cover, right? You see it in the movies and you think it's not real, but it's a real situation. And it's because that sound reminds him of obviously the war and the gunshots and everything like that. Um, Sophia, wow. Talk about medicating the symptoms while ignoring the cause. Yes. So um, yeah, that's the thing. We have to get to the root cause of whatever the issue is within our lives and address them, right? So whatever the root causes is really how you correct the problem without just putting medication on it. It's the same like with type two diabetes. If you just address the issue, right? Cause you know, type two diabetes, heart, issues, hypertension, we can really get to the root cause of the issue and stop just taking all these pills. Because again, the pills are, they will fix one thing, but they're going to mess something else up. Remember that. I never forgot that from uh, the doctor, um, one of the doctors um, in, one of, in one of my classes that taught me that. Vivia, um, trauma can produce panic attacks and anxiety attacks. Yes. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, so you guys know, I've mentioned it here before that I've had panic attacks. Um, and now I haven't really had one in a very, 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 very long time. And I, it must be because I'm doing a lot more self-care. I do self-care all the time, guys. You guys know already I'm a big self-care person. Simple thing as taking a long extended shower can be self-care. Going for a walk this morning, I left the house at 730. I went for an early run. Um, and that was just a really good thing for me, two miles. And I was able to get out the good, you know, um, the good hormones, right? Cause you have the stress hormones and you have the other good hormones that our body, um, uses to help to make us feel good and to give us good energy. And so that run that I did this morning helped me, right? So because I've actually changed my lifestyle drastically, um, and I recognize ways that I can help myself my whatever trauma that might have been giving me the panic attack i probably don't even remember another traumatic thing that happens to me guys if i'm driving through a tunnel forget it <laughs> that's a that's claustrophobia so that's a, a type of phobia which is also a mental health right phobias are mental health vivia you can um chime in on that um phobias are also um and i used to have two type of phobias um, one I got over not too long ago, but the, when it comes to driving through tunnels, very, very difficult for me, very difficult, right? So you can get panic attacks and anxiety attacks because of some trauma. And if you don't, if you don't identify where it's coming from, that's really sort of, um, and it takes some time, you know, it takes some time to really acknowledge and recognize where the trauma is coming from. So start to think about it, start to recognize where that trauma might be coming from. 
right? Kudos, Bridget, right? Bigging her up too. We were giving her some hand claps before. Bridget, when I was younger, my mom moved here and I was left with my grandparents for four years. I find that now I'm almost 40 and I have an issue with abandonment. Girl, that word. <laughs> a lot of people, let's, we're going to have to do a show on abandonment, right? A lot of people have that problem. I'm so glad you touched on that because when you think about it, people, Jamaican Caribbean people, right? You come to America for a better life. Now, I'm I'm so blessed. My family, my dad would travel. Yes, my dad would come to America all the time, leave us with my mom in Jamaica. And then eventually we all got our papers. And so we all moved to America together as a family. If my mom had left and bo both my mom and dad had left and maybe left me with someone else, I don't know how I would have, um, how, but I know people who've gone through that. And it's not easy. Actually, uh, it changes you slightly, right? You, you start to feel like something someone's going to abandon you, you, you enter into a relationship and you start thinking the person's going to abandon you, right? Meanwhile, they're there and you're like, I'm here with you, but you don't even believe them because you're like, I got abandoned when I was five or when I was eight or 12 or whatever it is. So that's such a real thing. And I, and I think that you bringing it up, Bridget, will help a lot of us out here today sort of think about that. Were you did you feel abandoned when your parents left? They left for a better life. Yes, they left to take care of um, you, you know, and that's what it is. Our parents love to come and find a better place for us and to bring us to the land of opportunity. That's what my dad would always say. We're going to the land of opportunity. <laughs> Who else parents is to say that? <laughs> um, and so, you know, we love them for it, you know. Um, and again, I had my mom was always with us. My dad was the one doing the traveling and then he came and then we were all together. Um, but that abandonment thing is real for a lot of Caribbean people. Um, Bridget, thank you for bringing that up. And I and and there's ways to really mitigate that, as I said before, right? Um, writing is great. Carrie Ann says yes, definitely have a journal. I just earlier today I had something going on in my head, swirling, swirling, and I said, you know what? I'm I don't have time for this because I have too much to do. <laughs> my day was it was packed. I got up and I got that journal and I just started writing and I wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote. One page. It wasn't a lot. One page. It took me five minutes. When I was done, I close it, walk away. That's it. That's what I did. That's what I do. That's just some of the strategies. People out here living their best life doesn't mean they have it all together at home. Like me, you guys see me out here. You think I have it all together. I don't. I just have a lot of tools that I use, right? Like I just said, writing. I write. I may take a long shower. I may go for a run, right? Um, and at the same time, I'm eating well. I'm making sure that I'm nourishing my body the right way. All right. I always want to bring it back to nutrition as well. Vivi, I laugh. And I don't know what I laugh about. <laughs> I must have said something silly, right? Um, all right. No lie. Not about the quantity of friends. It's about the quality. Okay. That was when I saw. I have so many more comments. Let me hurry up. Keeping emotions and experiences bottled up is an unfortunate trait of us Korean people. We must get away from it, right? Sophia, make we leave this storing up everything inside and then we explode it from the wrong person, right? That's such a thing that tends to happen in our community, right? We misdirect our anger to the wrong person because we have all this stuff inside. And that's why people just run away from mental health when all it is is just sitting down, understanding yourself, understanding what happened to you. That's the question. Now, what, not what wrong with you. What happened to you, right? That's the question. We're reframing things, right? What happened to you? And that's actually more compassionate. It's a more compassionate way of addressing people, of dealing with people. And so I want you guys to, you know, these are classes. We're talking, but I want you to learn something as you're, as you're doing, because I'm learning too. Um, and so we want to ask that question, guys. What happened to you? Did something happen to you? And allow the person to speak. Give them the space to speak, to share, right? Um, but Caribbean people, we have so much stigma around us. We have to get away from them, right? Um, Snuggle668 says, I want to see you do a one-on-one -on -one with the nurse and nerd it would be interesting to listen to the nurse and nerd. Okay, share more about that because I'm not sure. Is that a is that a, a nurse and nerd? Is that a, a, a what is that? Tell me more about that. Definitely would love to do a one on one with any nurse. My sister is actually a nurse. Um, I would have to see if she would want to come out and talk to us about that. Have you listened to a young man called Dr. CB? Yes, of course. Dr. CB is amazing. Love him. You guys know he's no longer with us. I have to jump through these comments because I'm running out of time. I don't like meds, so I think it's, um, I think of my blood pressure medicine as a vitamin. Oh, 
Camille, yeah. So we got to get to the root cause of the high blood pressure. We're going to have to do another show on high blood pressure so we could talk about how you can actually I have a friend who actually came off of high blood pressure medicine. It's doable, guys. You just have to be able to do the hard thing. Make up in your mind, right, that you're going to do whatever it takes, right? Use food to heal the mind. Yes, we are using food to heal the mind because that's really the best way to go about it. Yes, and Carrie Ann echoed that, Vivia. She loved it. Um, this is why I founded this clinic called No Medicine. I see some language I can't understand. Lifestyle Clinic in, oh, Myanmar. Lovely. A true man. <laughs> I love my Jamaican people. I have had an anxiety attack where I broke out in hives. Yeah, it's true. It's again, autonomic nervous system. Things are happening. You can't stop it from happening. It's like your heartbeat. Think about it like your heartbeat. All right. These things happen. Facts. And that's why I have to reverse a lot of diabetes. Yeah. Type two diabetes. Totally reversible. Vivia. All right. And I love reading what Vivia says because she's a clinician. So phobias and everybody else. I don't want to be biased, guys. D don't be offended by that. All right. Phobias may seem irrational, but it's rational for the person experiencing it. There are a few types, but understanding what you are experiencing does not let it go away, but you will understand what you are feeling. Yes. Yeah, so maybe we can talk about phobia some more, Vivia. If you're going to do a show with me, we could jump into that. That's not a topic I'm, I'm versed on, but I love what you're saying here. So I hope folks can learn from what is being said right? Understanding what you are experiencing um, does not let, let it go away, but you'll understand what you are feeling, which is very important. Um, so Bridget said, yes, the um, explosion after everything inside, right? I purposely try not to do that. Yeah. And that's why some folks, we're almost done here, um, guys, two minutes, why folks have anger issues, right? Um, can stem from, you know, can stem from that right? Yes, Bridget, of course. Guys, you guys know, reach out to me, inbox me anytime you want. <laughs> I give it to, I have a 24 hour rule, but if you're inboxing me on Facebook, I'm not always on Facebook. Best way to get me is on Instagram. All right. Um, but try to link me up on Instagram. That's my main mode, but you can also go to my website and send me an email directly. I have a link to my, my email address there. Uh, Vivia, this is going to be my last comment of the evening. Then I'm going to wrap up and say goodbye to you guys. Vivia, by the way, thank you so much for being on here. You've been great. I'm going to read your last comment. We are very passionate as Caribbean people, but we need to become more knowledgeable as less fear in the community. Yes. Love that. Love that. So passion is really good, right? And passion directed in the right direction can really make amazing things happen. My passion drove me to become a nutritionist, walk away from my career that I had making six figures for how many years I built years. I had 20 years of experience in accounting and I walked away from it because of a passion that I had. So our passion can really drive us. Our passion can drive us to do so many great things, right? As Caribbean people, we strong, we can, I moved out of this country and lived in Indonesia and opened up the first Jamaican restaurant in Indonesia, in Bali right? Because of a passion that I had. Um, so guys, use your passion for good, right? Use your powers for good. <laughs> use your passion for good. Get the knowledge like Vivia is saying here. I'm going to wrap on this last comment and really use that to co correct anything. Self-regulate is what I'm teaching you guys to do. Self-regulate, which means basically like you're acknowledging and you're doing things with intention. You know, like Vivia said before, knowing understanding what you're feeling, right? That's very, very important. On that note, guys, uh, it's been a lovely conversation. I want to do this again next week. We're going to continue the conversation. Uh, this is part one. I'm going to see how deeper we go in trauma. Hopefully I can get Vivia to come on. We can talk some more. And again, I have um, another doctor that I'm uh, working. He's very busy. So I'm hoping to get on his schedule soon, have him come on, even if it's not in May. He'll be on um, and we can have some more conversations around this. I want to thank all of you for coming on today, for tuning in. Share this. This is a great conversation we've been having today. Um, share it with your, uh, share it on your page. Okay. Share this video, share this video. And I want you guys again to, you know, follow on my page so you can see what's going on. Um, and check out everything that I'm doing. If you follow me on my social media sites, you get to see all the stuff that's going on with me. All right, again, shameless plug. Join me on Thursday on Bronx Eats. We're going to be doing, uh, I'm going to be cooking up a storm um, in my kitchen so you guys can come hang out with me. But excellent conversation. Again, 
Vivia, thank you so much. Everybody else who's chiming in, who is sharing. Um, Bridget, thank you so much for sharing those great stories and really getting the conversation because this is how we have conversation. When you guys share, we end up like getting to have this lovely, lovely conversation. All right. So that's it for now, folks. Um, let's let's see each other next week, all right? And guys, I just want to implore you, if you do have any topics that you want me to cover, feel free to send me an inbox as well, all right? I'm happy to do those. Um, I'm happy to, um, you know, do that. But I'm going to jump off this platform, and I will see you guys all next time. Until then, guys, walk good, eat your veggies, and really remember that your mental health matters, okay? Your mind matters, all right? And I love you all. Take care of yourselves. All right. And meatless Mondays. Make sure you're eating. If you didn't cook yet, make something without meat. All right. <laughs> all right. I love y'all. See y'all later. <laughs>